known by his initials, JFK. So oh, JFK, yeah. who are we talking about? So here's, here's our question. So raise your hand and Brian will call on you. But think of any other people you know, any other famous people that you know just by their initials. Brian and I thought of five. Ooh. So JFK is one. Jeff? Those are my initials, JFK. Oh, well, there you oh. go. <laughs> yes, wow. Peter. Wow. Oh, I, I, I don't know if my virtual hand up. I don't know if my virtual hand up. RFK. 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 Brian said that one, right? So, okay. So maybe we know more than. That's loud. Oh, it's me, Chris Britton, who said that. Okay. Well, we all know him, but we don't call him AL. We all call him Abe or Abe Lincoln. We we're thinking of people you know by their by their um, initials. Nolan. So I had two that jumped into my mind. One is LBJ. No. Lyndon Baines Johnson. Yeah. Yep, that's yep. the one we were thinking of. And the other one is uh, MLK. Exactly, Martin Luther King. Yep, Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. Very, I mean, um, Adam, do you have one? I oh, yeah, but I do. I think it's go by your first and your initials, which is the MLK. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mm -hmm. All right. So he was born in 1917 and he lived to 1963, which is not a long life. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, but he was the 35th president. As you remember from last week when Joe Biden got inaugurated, he's number 46. So JFK was 11 presidents ago. And this is a picture of him when he's a little boy. I think you can look at it and see his face. But that sister sitting next to him is Rosemary. And we're gonna talk about her a lot as well. He, she's just one year younger than he is. So we're gonna talk about Rosemary. And that's one of their grandpas. That's their grandpa on their dad's side. Okay, so we can go. So this didn't come out very clearly, but this was important to mention. This is a, a map of Ireland, and you can see a boat making a trip from Ireland over to the United States. And you probably remember studying this in your history books, but in the 1840s and 50s, there was a potato famine in Ireland, there, and that was the main crop. That was, there weren't a lot of other, lot of other crops. And so when the, when the potatoes turned black and were no good, over a million people starved or and died of starvation or disease. And so another million people or so came over to the United States as immigrants. Um, and the thing is that these people were desperate. They, they were poor, they were hungry, they just were looking for a better start. Um, and so there was a huge number of immigrants from Ireland. And Brian knows on his dad's side, you all know Dan, Dan's, have, Dan's dad, all four of his grandparents, his, are they're all from Ireland. So when Brian looks at his, um, his relatives on his dad's side, they all came over from Ireland and because of, because of poverty and because of the potato famine. Um, and that was true for John F. Kennedy's grandparents as well. And so they, what's interesting about this is they came, they landed in Boston, um, and they really didn't have a penny. They were just very, very poor and they worked hard. And so by the time John F. Kennedy was born, his, his father was a banker and he was doing quite well financially. So they had, they had come a long way in a short time. Um, and a lot of times when immigrants come over, or in, in this case, the Irish immigrants, they take you know, labor jobs. So you had people building railroads and working in coal mines and cleaning people's houses. Um, so it was very important to John F. Kennedy's family that they'd come so far since they'd gotten here. But the other piece of this information is that um, he was Catholic, as many people in Ireland are. That's the main religion over there. And so when he ran for president, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, people were mistrustful because he was Catholic and they made a big deal about it and asked him a lot of questions about it. And uh, he did become the first Catholic president. And amazingly, there has not been another Catholic president until last week. Joe Biden is the second Catholic president. So those were a couple of things about their beginnings. Brian's saying, I have to tell you something else. Okay, oh, Brian wrote a note for me to write down for you. There have been six Irish presidents in all. I think there probably are more, but Brian tells me there are six. Biden, Kennedy, the two Bushes. Reagan. Reagan. And one other. And one other. But Brian says there are six. But living in Boston, I think everybody's Irish and related to Irish. So I, I think it, there should be more than six. But OK, we can go ahead. All right, Chris, I think this is the house you were talking about. So Brian and I went over here yesterday. And it's closed because of COVID. We went when Brian was a little boy, but this, this house is in Brookline, right near Coolidge Corner. And this is where John F. Kennedy was born. And um, he was born right in the house, and as were some of his siblings, but he was born right in the house. So you can go to the next ones, Karen. And no, so this, so John F. Kennedy, this is the elementary school that was nearby. The top picture is an old picture um, and it's called devotion. And that sounds like a church word that sounds like praying or devotion, but it was a man's last name. It was founded on property that once belonged to a man whose name was Frank Devotion. And his grandson left the property to be turned into schools. And so you see the school up at the top and that's where John F. Kennedy went through fourth grade and then he went to a lot of prep schools. He switched prep schools a lot. He was awfully sick with a lot of serious diseases. Um, and then he went to Princeton for a very, very short time. And then he switched to Harvard. 
So he, but he went to so many schools, but the reason that we put the one below it in here, here's a picture of what it looks like now, but I'm pretty sure this is where Nolan Tierce went to elementary school. Is that right, Nolan? Is no, can you see him, Karen? Um, he may have logged off. Don't see him. Yeah, I think this is where Nolan went to elementary school, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, he, um, John F. Kennedy had scarlet fever, he had appendicitis, he had gastroenteritis, he had all these terrible problems. And then when he was at a prep school in um, Connecticut, he tried to play football like his big brother and he really hurt his back. And that's a back injury that was going to be a problem for him for the rest of his life. And so all his sicknesses did have a lot to do with him um, switching schools as often as he did. So, okay. Um, okay. No one, no Julie, John. Can yeah. I get, can I give you a little something about devotion school? Oh, sure, please. Uh, Rick Cass taught there for many years. And I believe it was maybe a year or two ago, they had a big to do in town to change the name. Oh, that's right. Because he, Edward Devotion was a big slave owner. And mm -hmm. I don't know if they came up with a new name. I think they did but I don't know what it is, but. Oh, you know what? I think, could it be Coolidge Corner School? Did they just call it that? I, but I, do I honestly that don't that you know. It. I huh. don't know what the new name is, but I know that there was a big effort right. to change the name. Yeah, you're right. And, I now remember that. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So here are the Kennedy kids. So um, the parents we saw on the Irish map page, they were, um, Jo Joseph P. Kennedy and Rose, her, what was her maiden name? Rose Fitzgerald. And uh, then she married him. But they had nine children. They had nine children in 17 years. So Rose Kennedy was pretty much pregnant quite a bit of her of the time. And the oldest, the top one is a good one. You can see it going down the line. But the oldest boy is Joe or Joseph or Joe. And then John is number two. The one who became president is number two. And then right after him, a year later, is his sister Rosemary. And we're going to talk about her later on. And then there was a sister named Kathleen, but they called her Kick. Um, but she um, was, and, and John F. Kennedy, I don't know why he would say this, but he said he's her favorite sister. He, she was his favorite sister. I don't think you're supposed to pick favorites, but he would say that she was his favorite sister. And then there's Eunice, and we're going to talk about her. Then there's Patricia and Robert Kennedy, but you'll hear him called Bobby Kennedy a lot. And then Jean, and then Edward Kennedy, Ted Kennedy, who you know as, um, as you know as uh, our senator. Look at Nolan would like to share. Is he? He's back now. Did he? Is he going to say something about devotion? He's on. He's he was watching. Oh, okay. He says so. I uh, so I actually grew up in Brooklyn and Coolidge Corner, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to. Cool. Uh, I went to devotion school. That's what I thought. That's what I just said. I thought you did. I did, did yeah. And yeah. all I was the way there. through to eighth grade. Yeah. Actually, yeah. not really. I was there from pre from pre K to the second grade. Okay. Yeah, I had a feeling you went there. Yeah, I did, and also. I lived on Winchester Street, which is not far from Beale Street. So I was actually, I could walk to JK's house. Oh, wow. Cool. So we we're quite close. Nolan, did they change the name of the school? They did. Do you remember what it got changed to? Yeah, to the Coolest Corner School. Okay. okay. That's we correct. talking about that. Okay, cool. Thank so you. So I, I had a great time living there. Yeah, it's a fun place. And it's a fun place. So we, these are just the fam, Cam, Kennedy family. And, and also, you probably know that Bobby became now his attorney general, but also his, well, you don't know, his campaign manager as well. Yeah, Bobby was very involved in his brother John's campaigns later on. Okay, we can go to the next page. So here's a big story, and you've probably heard this story before. So we were looking at devotion, and we said that he went to, JFK went to devotion, and then he went to a couple of prep schools in Boston. He went to Dexter, and he went to Greenow and Nobles, 
And then they moved to New York and he moved to, went to a prep school called Riverdale. Then he went to one called Canterbury. Then he went to one called Choate. And then he thought he would be different from his brother and his father who went, they went to Harvard. So he signed up to go to Princeton, but then he um, had to drop out because he was feeling, um, he had a sickness. And when he went back to school, he went to Harvard and then that's where he graduated from. But when he graduated from Harvard, he had, right before that, he'd been over in Europe. His dad had been made ambassador to England. And so they had all the Kennedys over there and they were touring Europe and seeing what was going on. And uh, John Kennedy got very interested in politics, international politics. And he, he hadn't been a very serious student before this. He kind of goofed around sometimes, but when he came back from Europe, he had a couple more years to go in Harvard and he got very serious and World War II was just starting. So he was very focused on all of that. Um, and so when he graduated from Harvard, he went to Stanford Business School for a very short time and decided that he wanted to go into the Navy instead. And he wanted to be part of the World War II effort. Um, but the problem was he had that bad back. Remember we said he had that football injury? And so it took some doing. They wouldn't take him at first, but finally, finally they took him and he got it, he was in the Navy and he became, he became a, a lieutenant because he was, you know, he, he went to officer training school and he had his degrees in relative, in, in that relative areas. So they made him a Navy officer. Here he is, that top left picture is a very famous picture of him when he was lieutenant of a PT ship. PT 109 is the one we know the most about. And the PT stands for, Brian and I just learned this, patrol. So the ships would patrol. And the T stands for torpedoes, which are sort of missiles that are sent underwater. So he was a patrol torpedo ship lieutenant. And he was in the, the Pacific Ocean. He had, there were 14 men on his boat. And um, it was really dark one night. And their job was to keep their eyes out for big Japanese ships. And um, they didn't see this one coming. Somehow it snuck up on them. And you can see, this is a picture, somebody drew this, but the ship came up and it went right through the middle of the PT ship. It went, cut it right in half. And so sadly, two of his men died, um, but there were 12 survivors, And but it was in the dark of night and there weren't any other ships anywhere around. So they floated through the night and they were hoping somebody would notice them and they didn't. And so the next day, they realized they had to swim to the nearest island, which was three and a half miles away. And so um, John Kennedy, who was Lieutenant, there was one man who had been very badly burned in the crash. His name is Patrick McMahon. It's down at the bottom. They called him Pappy because he was a lot older than the rest of them, but he was very badly burned and he couldn't swim. And he said to them, you just go on ahead. You know, you young men, you have lives ahead of you, families, children, you go ahead. And uh, John Kennedy said no. So John Kennedy put him on his back. Now this is in the ocean. He put him on the back and then he took the strap from his life jacket and he put it between his teeth and he swam three and a half miles leading his men and pulling this Patrick Pappy McMahon the whole way. And then they got to a first island and there wasn't a lot of food there. John F. Kennedy swam out again a mile to look for people that night. They couldn't find them. So then they had to swim to another island that was three miles away. So he pulled Pappy again for the same way with it in his teeth. So he really became a war hero. And this picture down at the bottom, that's Pappy McMahon. He lived to be 84 years old. And he really has um, John F. Kennedy to thank for that. And uh, they say that, he, well, he lived in Southern California. And every time John F. Kennedy would go to California, his limousine would pull up to Pappy's house and Pappy would come out and they'd sit and chat for a little bit, you know, in, in the limousine um, what, before he, Kennedy had to go off to his meeting. Um, yeah, but they stayed as close friends too. They stayed close friends. And, and after the fact, um, Kennedy was awarded two medals, you know, for bravery and for one for bravery and one when you get wounded in, the, in service, I guess you get a purple heart. So he was that because the accident also made John F. Kennedy's back, which was already bad, this accident made his back even worse. But he, he was known as a big war hero after this. So anything else, Bry? No. Okay, you can go ahead. All right, so this is a picture you've seen before. We had this picture when we were talking about um, John Quincy Adams, because John Quincy Adams spent so much time in so many branches of the government. But 
John F. Kennedy, when he came back from World War II, he settled in Boston. Um, which of course he was born in Brookline. So this was a familiar area and he rented an apartment and it's on Bowdoin Street, which I guess was across the street from the state house. And supposedly he kept that as his home address for the rest of his life. And so um, when he was there, he ran to be a congressperson from a representative from that part of Boston, from that district in Boston. And he won, he was, so he was in the House of Representatives for six years from 1947 to 53. So you see that over in the blue column and then at the bottom. And then after that, he ran for Senate and he was six, seven years in the Senate um, from 1953 to 1960. And then, and these jobs, of course, took him down to DC. So he spent a lot of time in Washington, DC, but his official address was up here. And then, as we'll see with the next couple slides, then he ran for president. He ran in the 1960 election and he was elected president. And so he served, he was president for only two years, 1961 to 1963. And you know that it's a four year term. So you'll see, we'll talk about why his presidential term was only two years, so. But yeah, so he was in two branches of the government, the legislative and the executive. Okay. Here we go. This is, so when he was a senator, I guess he met her when he was in the House of Representatives, but this is Jacqueline Bouvier. And uh, she was a lot younger than him. She was 12 years younger. She was just in 24. And uh, he was 36 when they got married. And she was also from a wealthy family and she was very cultured and she spoke French beautifully. She'd studied in France for a year. She was very fashionable and lovely. And um, she was a photographer for a newspaper down in Washington, DC. So that's how that, well, they met at a dinner party, um, but they dated. And then at, soon after he became a Senator, I believe they, they got married. And um, so that these are a couple of wedding pictures of, from, from that very lovely. I think it said, I think we read that their wedding had 700 guests. And then when they had the party afterwards, they included 600 more people. So they had like 1300 people when they got married. So clearly both of their families were wealthy. So next. Yep. Yeah. Th thank you. All right. So here we are in the 1960 presidential election. And this was funny for us to do this because of the election that we just came off of. Because as you know, the election we just came off of, one of the things that journalists kept talking about is how much social media was a part of it. You know, Facebook played a part of it, Instagram played a part of it, Twitter played a part of it. Um, and so that was just something that was kind of new about this election, four years ago too, but more so than ever now. Um, and it was tricky too, because some, some of the things that were out on social media weren't exactly true or fact-checked. Um, but going back in 1960, before 1960, if anybody had a presidential debate, they would do it in person. You could go in person to hear them, or they would do it on the radio. But when John F. Kennedy was running against Richard Nixon, for a president, they decided to do it on TV. And so this picture right here is a picture of somebody's TV set. This was the first time that a presidential debate was on TV. And before the debate, Richard Nixon was ahead. He was more well-known, he was older. People were giving, um, as I told you, people were a little skeptical about Kennedy being a Catholic. So before this election, before this debate, Richard Nixon was ahead. But then they had this elect, this uh, debate on TV. And I guess Richard Nixon had a sore leg and you could tell he looked uncomfortable with his sore leg. And he was really sweating a lot. And the newspaper, the TV cameras picked up the fact that he was sweating a lot and the lights just didn't look good on his skin. And, and so he just didn't come across well. And meanwhile, on the other hand, if you look at this, John F. Kennedy looked very comfortable under the lights and he'd allowed them to put a little makeup on his face so that his face wouldn't be shiny. And he was very comfortable in this, in this um, situation. So if you ask, they polled people after the election and John F. Kennedy pulled ahead in the polls and people say it had to do with this election and the, with this debate, I'm sorry. 
But the other thing that's funny is they also polled people who just listened to it on TV, who didn't see it, who just listened to it on the radio. They didn't see it on TV. And people who listened to it on the radio said it was a tie. They said there wasn't a clear winner. But the people who watched it said that there was definitely a clear winner, that it was John F. Kennedy. So this was the first time that we really learned how powerful a TV and now, as I say, now other forms of social media can be in an election. So that was something that was unusual then. Okay, we can go ahead. Okay, now here's their family. And one of the things, so when he won, he was 43 years old, which means that Jackie was 31 years old. Imagine she was the first lady of the United States when she was just 31 years old and she had small children. In fact, the election was in November, he won and she was pregnant. And then two weeks after the election, John Kennedy was born. So she moved into the White House with a newborn, not just a small child, but a newborn. Um, and there hadn't been little kids in the White House in 50 years. Uh, most of the presidents who'd been ahead of John Kennedy were older and their kids were older. So this was new um, to see the kids running around and Jacqueline Kennedy tried so hard to keep them away from photographers. She didn't want photographers taking pictures of her family life. She wanted her kids to have some privacy, but their dad thought it was great when they got in the pictures. So he, he allowed it when, whenever he could. Um, and they had a lot of pets. They had so many different kinds of pets, but including Caroline's pony and her pony was named Macaroni. And so that macaroni lived at the White House along with many other pets. Um, but looking at this picture up top, a lot of you have been to Cape Cod, I know. And the Kennedy family from the time John Kennedy was a little boy, they have a big piece of property on the beach in Hyannis. And they have a couple of big houses down there. They call it the compound. And very often you'll see pictures of the Kennedy relatives down at, at Cape Cod at Hyannis Port. And here's John F. Kennedy and his, and his wife and his little kids visiting there while he was president. Um, the other thing we learned when we were talking, when Brian and I were reading about his children, apparently Jackie had had five pregnancies. She had a miscarriage the first time she was pregnant. And the second time she was pregnant, she had went through the whole pregnancy, but her baby was born in what they call a stillborn. The baby wasn't alive when it was born. And then her third baby was Caroline, who you see here. And then her fourth baby was John, and they called him John John. And he was born, as I say, right before they moved into the White House. And then she had a, another child, Patrick, while they were living in the White House, but he was born five weeks early. They were, at the, they were on Cape Cod at the time, so they rushed them over to the, the Air Force Base there. Um, and he was five weeks early and he just didn't live he was um and so that was a sadness so that while they were in the white house she was mourning the death of her brand new little baby who just wasn't strong enough to make it so they did have a lot of sadness and then this last picture down at the bottom is a very famous um picture that's john john peeking out of the desk while his dad's in the oval office um but this desk is called the resolute desk and Brian and I read that that desk was a gift from Queen Victoria to President Hayes a long time ago. And it was made out of wood from a ship called the Resolute Wood. It was a British ship that had explored Antarctica, I think. And um, so anyway, she had that ship turned into this desk and many presidents used it. And the part where John John is, that little door, that was added when FDR was president because it used to be open but he had polio and he had to wear braces on his legs and he didn't want people to see them. So he had that little desk, that drawer, that area, that door and that area underneath the desk added. And so the Resolute Desk, a lot of presidents use it, but I don't know who stopped using it and they put it in the basement of the White House. And Jackie Kennedy, when she came into the White House, one of the things she did is she, you know, she really fixed it up. 
And she said, it's important for the American president to live in a house that's filled with American furniture and furniture with a history. You know, we have a very strong American history. Let's show it with the things we have in the White House. So she saw this down in the basement and she had them bring it up and put it in the Oval Office and bring it, you know, fix it up. And it's still, it's still there. I think every president since then has used it. I think George Bush used a different one, but he had this one in the next room. Um, so this Resolute desk is very fancy. I don't know, we'll have to look and see which one is there now, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, while you, Jackie also did her grand tour and interviews over the refreshment, refreshments as well. Oh yeah, Brian said, after she refinished the White House, she redecorated it and put all kinds of amazing art and American history. Um, she gave a tour. She put, went on TV and she gave a tour to millions of Americans so they could tour the White House. And she won an Emmy for it. It's the only time a first lady has won an Emmy award, but she won an Emmy for it. So we, I think we can go ahead to the next one. So John Kennedy was president. He was just president for two years. Um, and he, his main things that he did, one thing that he did was he, he invented or he founded the Peace Corps. And what the Peace Corps is, it's a volunteer organization where young people will go live in another country that might need some engineering help or might need some teaching help. Um, and they live there for a year or two, just really helping and doing service. So that, that was one of his big accomplishments, one of his big positive accomplishments. He also, there a couple of things that he did in Cuba were a result of World War II. After World War II was over, there was a big showdown between countries who believed in democracy and countries who believed in communism. And Cuba believed in communism. So one time Kennedy organized an invasion that didn't go well. It was kind of a failure and a, embarrassing for him. And another time, Russia was coming over and putting missiles on Cuba and sort of aiming them at the United States. And that made a lot of Americans very anxious and nervous because Cuba is just 90 miles away. So um, Kennedy ordered his Navy to kind of go do a big blockade. So that was called the Cuban Missile Crisis. And people were really worried. It was a very scary time for people. But in the end, um, the Russian ships turned around and went back to the Soviet Union. So, so that was a success ultimately, even though that was a scary time for people that ended up being a, a, um, a success. But these are the, this is the accomplishment, another accomplishment for which he was really well known. And he was very interested in, in working with the space program. There had been some astronauts and they were hoping to do some big things, but they, but it was still the space program was really new. And in a very famous speech, John Kennedy said up at the top, we choose to go to the moon in this decade, in these 10 years and to do other things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. And he thought it was a challenge that was worth, worth taking. And um, so this was in 1962 that he said it. He, um, he died in 1963. And sure enough, Americans put the first man on the moon in 1969. So he was right. We really did put a man on the moon within 10 years. He just wasn't around to see it. And John, Brian wants me to, Brian made me put this arrow in here pointing. Brian wants to tell you about this man the arrow's pointing to, the blue arrow. Because he's, he was another astronaut that also went to the moon, John Glenn, who, as we also all know, one, was a senator, two, had a second flight, and three, just passed away. Yeah, I bet the person who was on the first on the moon was Alan Shepard. Did I say the wrong? No, Neil Armstrong, Neil Armstrong. I think I said the wrong one. The one who landed on the moon was Neil Armstrong. But this guy, John Glenn, who's behind Kennedy here, circled. He went around the moon, around the, you know, the Earth three times when he was a young astronaut. And that was a huge accomplishment. Um, and then Brian said, Brian's right, he did go up a few times. But when he finished being an astronaut, he became a US Senator in Ohio. And he was a Senator for many years. And then he went back up into space as an astronaut when he was 77 years old. So, which is kind of remarkable. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, John F. Kennedy apparently loved the space program loved learning everything about it, was very excited about supporting it. And it was kind of, this was called a Cold War. There wasn't really fighting with the Soviet Union anymore, but they just kept 
trying to outdo each other with who can have the better space rockets, who can have the bigger weapons, who can, you know, so it was kind of a back and forth about trying to be the best at these things. And so he was very much involved in, in the space program and trying to have the best space program. So next, next. Okay. All right, so this is the sad news and we didn't put all the we didn't put the saddest pictures in here. Well, the scariest pictures, but this picture up at the top when Jackie Kennedy is in her pink suit. That's a very famous suit. Um, and they flew down to, this is in 1963 in November, they flew down to Dallas, Texas, because John Kennedy was going to talk to the Democrats down there. The Democrats were having some disagreements among themselves, and he was going to go down and talk to them. And as part of his day in Dallas, there was a big parade. They had them in cars, and they were going through the streets, and he was in one car with Jackie and also the mayor of Dallas right? Governor. The governor, the state governor, I'm sorry. And they were in one car. And then um, his, this is his vice president below, Lyndon B. Johnson, LBJ, as somebody mentioned earlier. And he was in another car. He was down there as well, because he was from, he was from the Texas area. So of course he would want to be down there. Um, and they had a protective top to put over the car, but John F. Kennedy decided that he didn't want to have the protective top. Top. It was a plastic clear top that people could see him and he could see people, but he just wanted to ride with an open car. So they were driving down the street and they were in an open car and a man was up on a, I don't know what, the fourth or fifth floor of a tall building as they drove by the, the book depository and he shot him. He shot him once in the back and he shot him once in the head. And his poor wife, Jackie, was sitting right next to him and he collapsed onto her and they rushed him to the hospital, but he, he was pronounced dead 30 minutes later. So as you know, when a president is killed or a very famous politician, it's called an assassination. So he was assassinated. Um, he was assassinated by a man named Lee Harvey Oswald. Lee Harvey Oswald. And then Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested. And when he was at the police station the next day or two days later coming out of the police station, somebody shot him. Somebody was so upset that he'd killed the president that somebody shot him, Jack Ruby shot him. So that a lot happened, but this bottom picture and you can just look at Jackie's face and she just looks so sad. But this is on the plane going back to Washington because you can't have our country without a president and our president had died and so on the plane, on the way back to Washington, DC, Lyndon Johnson was sworn in. You see him raising his hand. He was sworn in as the vice president um, on the way back to Washington. So by the time they landed, there was another president acting, you know, in charge of the country. And then yeah. this, this, oh, what and, we're gonna And say? also something I just read mom this morning is that it also took off Hollywood and their, and his, and their friends also, it's at risk. I read mom that his old friend, Frank Sinatra, cried three days nonstop. A lot of people. I mean, if you're old enough to be around when this happened, everybody remembers where they were when they heard the news. I was, I was born in 62, so I was only one year old when it happened, so I don't remember, but my parents did, and they remember exactly what they were doing, and I think in my life, that's like 9-11. I remember exactly where I was and what happened when 9-11 happened, because it was such a big tragedy. Um, but this picture up here at the top is such a heartbreaking picture, but this is at his funeral on November 25th, so just three days later, and you see Jackie dressed in black, and she has a black veil over her head, and she's got to one side, she has Teddy Kennedy, and to the other side, she has Robert Kennedy, those are um, John's brothers, and they're watching his, his, his casket was pulled on a wagon by a horse, by white horses. It was pulled through Washington, D.C. to Arlington Cemetery, the military cemetery where he was buried. Um, and then, there, then symbolically, they had a black horse with no rider, and they had bo boots in it backwards. That's what you do when you have a fallen leader. I think what you do to symbolize the fallen leader is to have an empty horse with a pair of backward boots. But as it went by, as it went by his family, you see his little son. This is just such a heartbreaking picture. That's John John saluting his dad's, you know, funeral procession as it goes by. He was three years old. Next slide. Next slide, yeah. 
So, and then this is, this is, there's more sadness in the Kennedy family. They're kind of known for their tragedies. So this top corner where you see two um, people in military uniforms, that's John Kennedy. But the one next to him is his older brother, Joe. Um, and his older brother, Joe, was smart and athletic. Everybody thought he was going to be the one who would run for president someday. But he fought in World War II. He was a um, pilot. And he was, um, his, he, his plane blew up. He was on a mission and his plane blew up. And so he died in World War II. And then the sister up in the corner, that's Kathleen. They called her Kick. His favorite, his favorite actor, he, said. he said it was his favorite and she married oh her mother was not happy about it but she married an english man um and the mother wasn't happy because he was not catholic but also um kathleen and her husband her husband was from a wealthy british family and they used to tear around and do fun things and they went on a plane ride together in a little plane and their plane crashed um four years later four years after her brother in france and so she and her husband died in france and then down at the bottom, of course, we just said that John Kennedy was assassinated. He was on, he's on the right here. But you see his younger brother, Bobby, when President Kennedy was president, he had his brother Bobby be the head attorney in the country, the lead mm -hmm. attorney, the atten attorney general. And uh, so they worked very closely together. And so five years after John F. Kennedy died, was assassinated, Robert Kennedy decided that he was gonna run for, for president. So he was in the election. He was trying to get Democrats to say he was going to be their choice. And he was campaigning in California and he was assassinated. So he was killed in 1968, just assassinated five years after his brother, John. So this family did have, of the nine children, they had these four just very tragic, tragic deaths. So we can move on. But they also had some happy news. And so we'll just talk about the other siblings. But this picture up at the top corner, the tall sister, yeah. I believe, is Eunice. And the short sister is Rosemary. And Rosemary had an intellectual disability. She was born with an intellectual disability. Um, but her father had her have, he wanted her to have an operation. And instead of making things better, the operation made things worse. And so she went to live in, a, in a, a place in Wisconsin for the rest of her life. She went and lived in a place with Wisconsin, in Wisconsin um, starting when she was about 22 years old. And um, the family spent, sent a lot of money that way. They built a house for her on the campus. They called it the Kennedy Cottage. She, they bought her a car so that her staff could drive her everywhere she needed to go. They gave her a dog, um, but he, he, he didn't tell the other kids where she was or anything like that. It was a real sadness. And her mother didn't visit her for 20 years. And then the, it, the mother didn't visit her until after her husband died. And after the father died, then the mother started visiting her again and her siblings got more involved in her life again. Um, so that was another sadness that, that didn't have to be, but the father just tried to do this, this um, operation on her that just was a bad, bad choice. Um, but anyway, she was very close with her, um, Eunice, and Eunice, you see here, and it, that became Eunice's lifelong mission, partly because of her sister, but also, she said, for other reasons as well. But she really didn't think that people with disabilities were treated fairly, um, and so she, could, she just spent her whole life working to make sure that people with disabilities had a good, had a good fair life. And at first, she would just um, have these these get-togethers in her backyard. She called it Camp Shriver because she'd married yeah. a man named Shriver. And they would just have kids from the neighborhood, kids with disabilities come over and swim in their house, in their backyard, in a camp they sort of pulled together in those early years. Um, so there she is there. And if we go to the next page, and C Camp Shriver ultimately grew into the Special Olympics. So I just wanna see with the, the gallery here, how many of you, put your hands up, how many of you have competed in the Special Olympics? Yeah, Ben, I know you've competed in the Special Olympics. You were on Brian's soccer team, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. And um, b b that was a great uh, memory. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, if if we got one more, if we got one more, you actually forgot one more Kennedy. It was uh, Ted Ted Kennedy, 
also died. Yeah, we'll get to him too. Yeah, you're right. But Special Olympics so started in 1968. So how many years ago was that? 32, 50 years ago, 52 years ago. So it's been going strong for a long time. And we, um, we met a couple of years ago, one of her sons was here in Newton to talk about the Special Olympics. Um, and and we, we got to meet him. So her children are now carrying this on in her name. Um, but this was one of her big accomplishments, of course, and she spent her life doing it. And if you go to the next slide, yes, I love this picture. Look at how old she is here. She's just, Eunice Kennedy lived to be 88 years old. Um, and she spent her whole life working with Special Olympics. And as I say, you know, she ended up passing it on to her children. Her children have taken over from her. But um, Ben, I want to answer what you just said. It's so those other Kennedys died so tragically and so young, two of them in their 20s, two of them in their 40s, but the rest of them lived very long lives. So Eunice Kennedy was 88. Her sister Jean was the one who died most recently. She just died, I think last year. She was 92. Um, and Rosemary, even though she was in Wisconsin and living in um, that, what they called the Kennedy Cottage in Wisconsin at St. Coletta's School, she lived to be 86 years old. So she died not too long ago. And then Patricia Kennedy, we didn't talk about her much. She married a movie star named um, Peter Lawford and she lived to be 82 years old. But the one that, so all of the others lived to be in their eighties or nineties, except Ted and Ted was our Senator and he had brain cancer. And so he died 11 years ago. I can't believe it's 11 years now, um, but he, he died when he was 77, but so he still had a pretty long life, but he was in- And his name is also linked with some other tragedy too. Yeah, his name, he's been linked with some tragedies himself. He was in a plane crash when he was campaigning once and one of his aides died and the pilot died, but he just hurt his back. So he had that early in his career. Then he was in a very unfortunate car accident. He was drunk and he was driving and the woman he was driving the car with was killed. So he's had a lot of bad tragedies as well. Um, but he was the Senator from Massachusetts from 1962, wait, from I think to 2009. So decades and decades. So in that time, he got a lot of really good things done. And he also um, really advocated very hard for the rights of people with disabilities. Um, so that's, I think those might be, there might be one other slide. Oh yeah, this is Brian. So the, the Kennedy grandchildren, a lot of the Kennedy grandchildren have gone into public service or political life. And a lot of you will recognize this is Joseph P. Kennedy III, right? Joseph yeah. P. Kennedy III. And he was our representative from Newton for, let's see, when did he start? In 2011. Um, no, no, not 2011, 2013. So he was our representative for about seven years. And in the summer of 2018, Brian got to meet with him. They were talking about votes and Brian was talk, interviewing him about whether people with disabilities should have the right to vote. Um, and Kennedy said, absolutely. In fact, he looked at Brian, he said, Brian, your vote counts just as much as the vote of the president of the United States. So, um, so that was a, but he's, and now he just ran for Senator. He was a representative and now he ran for Senator and he didn't win. Ed Markey, who's been our Senator for 40 years or whatever, or in government for 40 years won. Um, Kennedy lost by, I think it was 55% to 44%, something like that. So just as of a couple of weeks ago, he's not our representative anymore. Inauguration, he, he was no longer our state representative, but he, Brian and I read in the paper this morning, he's starting an organization to help get um, communities registered to vote just so that, so that we can have um, good representation in neighborhoods that, re that, need, that need a voice in, in politics. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen a lot of Kennedys um, in public service jobs, but also at the same time, there've been a lot of Kennedys who've had sad accidents, whether they're skiing accidents or plane accidents or drug overdoses. So they're a very big family, they're a very wealthy family, and that they're always in the spotlight. So we hear about their successes, but we also hear when things go wrong for the family. So anyway, I think that's all Brian and I have, but I bet yeah. you guys have a lot of questions. Okay. Um, let I me stop sharing okay. Okay. and um, I'll give you two things. Uh, the Shriver guy, I can't think of his first name. Is it Anthony? Anthony. No, 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 no. 
No, I can't remember. Okay. Sergeant Driver. Well, Sergeant Driver was her husband. Yeah, no, it's her son, and he started Best Buddies. And oh, when yeah. he started, he came to the old Newton Parks and Recreation Palace on the Pike and met with me oh, because wow. we were one of the first places that started Best Buddies, and we started it with BU. And oh, my forgot. other small little claim is I met Caroline Kennedy and her husband, Ed Schlossberg. Um, my sister Rosemary used to work for Ed and we were just walking in New York City one day and we ran into them. So oh my and that goodness. was, I mean, Caroline Kennedy to me when I was growing up was like, we all wanted to be Caroline Kennedy. Yeah. You know, we were all about the same age and we just thought that, you know, her dad was the best and yeah, everybody just loved the Kennedys in my family. Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting, yeah. interesting. Okay, um, let's first go to Nolan. So, <laughs> uh, um, here's actually a fact about the Kennedys. Okay. Well, one of them, was in a relationship with Taylor Swift, and that was Connor Kennedy. Oh, that's right. I forgot that. I yeah. forgot that. Yeah, that's that I knew. Did. And he was and a lot younger than her, wasn't he? Yeah. He was. Yeah. He was like, like 15, I think. Oh, no, he wasn't that young, was he? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Something like that, 15. Yeah, 16. He, was, yeah. he was in his like early 20s or what? late teens. Something like that. He was young. Okay. Yeah. And also, uh, one last thing, I have been a part of the Special Olympics for like 20 years. Wow, wow. And I wanted to meet Eunice and those guys. Cool. And too bad that they had died. If I had met them, that would have been amazing. Yeah. You yeah. told them my life story. <laughs> okay. Um, Colin, somebody else, Brian? Uh, go, go, go to Gary before I do any more. Okay. Um, Chris. Uh, 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 so, so, uh, 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 John F. Kennedy's last words was, my God, I've been hit, but why was Joe Kennedy, no, I mean, why was Robert Kennedy being, being shot too? I don't understand that either. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we'll have to research it more, but there was just somebody who didn't like what he stood for when he was campaigning to be the Democratic candidate. He was very liberal and one of Bobby Kennedy's big things was he really worked hard for civil rights. Um, as, as did JFK. As did JFK, but Bobby was really very gung-ho about civil rights and maybe it had something to do with that. I don't know, Karen, do you remember? I, I think that was a big, big reason. Um, yeah. But we'll have to look that up for another time, Chris. That's why the Kennedys aren't, aren't, aren't winning so they don't get assassinated. Mm -hmm. I think that might be the reason. Okay. Um, Dan. So, um, like me, um, I really enjoy, I've been a long time Kennedy admirer. Um, I've been doing Special Olympics now for 11 years. Can you believe it? 11, wow. 11 years. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, some of you guys may not know this, um, I actually met Eunice Kennedy's driver's son, one of his sons, and it was at one of my brother's school, and he gave a talk. Oh, wow. He gave a talk in my school. And Brian, that's really cool you met Joe Kennedy. Thank you. Because I actually met him twice. Oh, my goodness. Oh, awesome. <laughs> His office was right across the street from um, Whole Foods on, what? you know, right on Washington Street. He was, so know. people would see him crossing the street to go get his lunch. Yeah, and do you want to know, God, hey, Brian, do you know how I met him? No, how? So I came out at a, at a um, doctor's appointment, a, from a dentist appointment at Children's. And so dad wanted me to get a coffee. And so my dad and I went to Starbucks and he saw, and then he saw Daniel, that's Joe Kennedy. He was in the Starbucks and <laughs> I got, a, I posed for him a picture and, and he, and I told him I've been a special Olympics athlete for a while. So 
Oh, that probably touched him. Yeah. Yeah. He met one of Brian's favorite stories about him is he met his wife. He went to Harvard Law School and he met his wife in Elizabeth Warren's class. Elizabeth oh, Warren, who's now yeah. our senator. So <laughs> when Brian when Brian met him, he said, "Who was smart? You know, who was a better student? You were his wife. You were wife." And he said, "Oh, my wife, definitely my wife." <laughs> <laughs> um. No. Uh, Patty. Hi. Hi, Patty. Um, I've been to the John King Library at the, see the, the John King Library in uh, down in down near South Boston. I've been to that. Oh, neat. Oh, that's cool. You mean the yeah. JFK Leonard Library, that huge glass one right on the water? Yeah. That's so beautiful. That's oh such God. a beautiful building. I thought they were all like, like I think John Kennedy, I was looking at the pictures and all, all that stuff and I was reading it and I went for, for, for a field trip with my, with my um, Charles River. I was in Ch Charles, I was in uh, OMV and we went to um, that museum and I saw a lot of pictures of him and his family. And we, we first we saw a video of him and then we said, then we run to the museum. Oh, wow. That's a great museum. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what time is it. You can have a couple more, Brian. Yeah. Guess. Jen. Yeah. So you know what's funny? My mom and I, we went to um, Wegmans and we we bumped into Joe Kennedy. <laughs> and I believe I don't know if this is true. I believe he's also a neighbor of mine, but I'm not true. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> And he has that beautiful hair. So you do recognize when him when he sees his hair is just so noticeable. It's beautiful. But I think that's why so many people notice him. <laughs> ben. I met him at Cabot's. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a couple of things. I actually went to Dallas. I went, I went to Dallas for a MDSC conference. And I went into that museum. Where Kenny was shot. Oh, wow. and I, I went into the, the book. To, I went inside the, the, the uh, depository building, and I got a tour. Oh wow! And then, um, and don't forget about 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 Sue, about Sue Caroline. Uh uh oh. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> hey. that's a camera, camera. Oh, that's right. That's right. Interesting. Brian, who's this over here? Um, Elizabeth. What's up? Yeah, no, I, yeah. Oh, Ben's not done yet. Oh, sorry, Ben. Yeah, John F. Kennedy this morning around and, uh, the hour. Oh. Uh, Lizzie, Ben's still talking. It was a, 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 a the Red Sox eighth inning song from Neil Diamond. That was awesome. And yeah. I actually met with Dallas. I met with Dallas. I actually met the Dallas. Cowboys, cheerleaders. Oh, <laughs> now that's he's... another topic. <laughs> yeah, really. For the late night show, Ben. That's for the late night show. Let's go. All right, back to Lizzie. <laughs> yes, Lizzie. No. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Well, let's run through the renegade student thing of the John F. Kennedy and the compliments before the hour of one o'clock, and it started its life in there. Oh, wow. Yep. And let's do a special Olympics since I was eight years old, and I still do it. Hmm. Cool. Neat. Yep. Neat. I'm joking. Yeah, you know, actually, Jay was mentioning about who started fashion on this, and you were right, it was A.J. Schreiber. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, so both of them, um, Anthony and Eunice Robert Kennedy, both started Special Olympics. Neat. And I've been to Denver when I went grew up there. I did a lot of um Denver Parks and Rec. And then over here I did New Parks and Recreation Department with Mark. But I actually um what Jen said, I've been down where uh, I've been like in that area in South, somewhere in the South area where I saw GHC Library. Mm -hmm. I have a tour one year, really, as you mentioned in the chat, but one year 
I was going down somewhere, and I had a, a tour of JFK somewhere around the area. I think it was like one summer ago, and I had a tour of like something about JFK and what really happened. I went down with him, but I love JFK, you know, like it talked about National Treasure Part Two, um, <laughs> like how like both candies come together. I mean, for Joe, I mean, you know, I just Joe candy right now, but I, I keep forgetting the story, but I do remember how he was assassinated. Um, in the, the, in the shooting, but he was doing that. It, it wasn't Joe, it was, I think it was Robert Kennedy who got shot in that shooting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's yeah. just one. Karen, do we have time for one or two more questions? Oops, um, yep, one not, or two more is fine. How about and Allie's had her hand up a long time, Bri. It's not us and Allie. Oh yeah, I just remember John Kenny started and I died too. He what? He started pass away too. Oh okay. His, oh, his, his daughter, daughter actually, his not his daughter. daughter. His son yeah. was in a plane crash. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah right. Yeah, right. Yeah, mean officer too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've had a yeah, lot of yeah. sadness. Okay. No. Oh, she's eating. Okay. I don't know. Ask Karen. You might be done. I don't know. Peter. Oh. Who is that? That's Benny and Izzy. Right. Okay. Oh, hey, Snoz. Um. Well, I know that. Um. Um. I learned a lot about. Uh, John, about John um, Kennedy. Um, I learned a lot about John F. Kennedy um, in my world in my world history class, and then mm -hmm. in high school. Yeah, well, it's good you still remember it. And, uh, you must have been a good teacher. Uh, it was in World War Three. You are right, Julie, and um, that he. Um, um, he, um, what was it? Uh, I didn't know why R Robert Kennedy was killed, but also I knew that he did have sisters, but I didn't know that, um, that why would Ro um, Robert uh, Kennedy was mm -hmm. yeah. yeah nine nine kids can you imagine I know Peter. well Julie and Brian as always thank you so much it yeah. is always <laughs> something new that we learn together it's always um, interesting and fun and it's nice to see all these little connections that people have yeah. and I we look forward him. to seeing you in two weeks okay. um, because next week it, we're doing lambing with uh, Siri but we will have you back the, the following week for okay. the last president from Massachusetts and does anybody know who that is? No. Uh, last president. This is a hard one. I forget to say. Yeah, it is. All right, you. All right George, Brian, you can tell us. George W. Bush. George H.W. Bush. H.W. Bush. Most people don't know that he's from Massachusetts, but we're going to learn a lot about him. So oh thank you all for Thank you so much. I got the award at the hospital. I got an award. Oh. The award. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, we have two Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Brian. 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 Thank you
They're awesome, Ben. What? Yeah. I've been Ken Kennedy a long time ago. You met John uh -huh. Kennedy? Yeah. Wow, lucky. Yeah. All right, Elizabeth, can you click ago. off? I'll an be, iPad I'll be and seven. Ruth? I'll be the seven. You bet. We'll be there. All right, click yourselves off, people. All right, bye. Click off. Turn. We'll bye, see you later. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you again, Brian and Julie. Bye, Annie. Mark. It's really good. I send you oh, all my amazing hopefulness and joyful and have fun. Right back to you, brother. <laughs> right back to you, brother. Bye, Bye, Nolan. Bye Nolan. Thanks for joining See us guys. and contributing. All right, thank you. Thank you. Wow. As good always. Stuff. So I didn't realize that Rosemary was kind of sent away for 20 years. Oh my God, they gave her a lobotomy. I know. They scheduled the lobotomy awful. and then sent her and then sent her to the for Wisconsin yeah. for 20 years. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And Special the father, I mean, it was like he couldn't stand having somebody who was yeah. less than and he Yeah. He was shunned a, her. He was a tough character. You yeah. are. Very but tough. then to you know he prevented rose from going to see her right to stop family or his wife her mother years oh. not seeing your baby oh my oh. god oh my god special olympics looks great but they didn't they weren't good role models <laughs> you know well uh, not until the kids knew what where she was and why why yeah yeah they, 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 they had no clue look. can you imagine yeah can knowing? you imagine Having oh my sister just stuck. disappeared yeah Yikes. I don't oh. like them. I gotta go. Yeah. I'll see ya. Thanks. All, All right. Bye. 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 You PT today, Karen? Or what no. Do you got? No. Just doing laundry. So lots of going up and down stairs. <laughs> Which hurts the knees. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Um, um, it was good I to just, listen to the newsletter. Yeah, I was going to just tell you that um, I'm going to put a constant contact out about Micah's virtual basketball program. Okay. Because I think it's pretty cool and people yeah. should do it if they can. Okay. Um, talk to Shannon too. Um, Shannon's like, Mark, you could do eight units and make a lot more revenue. Or she was talking about camp stuff. But anyway, I asked, she's doing orienteering. So I said, could we maybe do an orienteering thing in the spring? One for kids and one for adults. She said she'd do it. You could do it at the Cove. Great. Um, so that's a, so now it's coming back in. That's an option too. Okay. Yeah. Just of something different, so. That would be, I'll put it on my list here. Okay. Okay. All right, my friend, you need me to do anything? Nope. No, okay. Nope. Have a good night. I don't think I'm gonna go to cheerleading, so I'll see you in the morning. Don't worry. Okay, oh, All right. I'm still recording, oops. Okay. As Bye. always. Bye. Bye.